So I showed you in the teardown video that a lot of these fittings were just absolutely disgusting and caked up with stuff. I also showed if I like just get it moist. <laughs> Why does the word moist trigger people? When I say moist, some people get really triggered. So I'm gonna use my ultrasonic cleaner here with just some hot soapy water. I will turn on the heater in here too. Uh, I'm gonna dunk these fittings in there and just let it go to town for like 20 minutes. And I also have <laughs> the fittings that came out of Skunk Works forever ago that I might as well also do the same stuff with. So let's just see if we can't maybe get these clean with the ultrasonic. I bought it. Might as well use it for something. The new XG321UG mini LED 32 inch 4K panel from ViewSonic blurs the lines between gaming and professional monitors. Gamers will enjoy super smooth gameplay due to its 144 Hz refresh rate and integrated NVIDIA G-Sync Ultimate and Reflex technology, VESA display HDR 1400 and super black levels due to the 1152 mini LED backlighting zones. While industry professionals can edit content with peace of mind due to 10-bit processing, 98% DCI P3 color gamut and 99% Adobe RGB. To see why the XG3 321UG is the perfect dual purpose monitor, follow the link in the description below. So both Skunk Works and the uh, Symbiote build used a uh, opaque fluid. This is left over from Skunk Works. It was green and then the stuff that was inside of the Threadripper build, which is right here, was silver. Um, one was View, one was True. The difference is View has the shimmering effect, the movement shimmering effect, and then the, the True it's just an opaque clear, or an opaque solid fluid. It doesn't have any pearlidescence or anything suspended in there. But both of these types of fluids just leave gunk everywhere. Look inside my double, my double 90 right there. See how just gross that is? Because anywhere that, you know, there's, there's a place for the coolant to stick, it does. That also includes inside radiators and such. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tear down these fluids real quick or these fittings that are still kind of connected. I'm gonna get everything ready. I'm gonna put everything in there. O-rings, the whole deal. Because what's gonna happen with the ultrasonic cleaner, and like I said, I am using hot soapy water, not alcohol. Um, people get very mad if you fill these with alcohol because of the fact that all the fumes can one, be dangerous for your, your respiratory system and two, the alcohol fumes are also flammable. So if you're gonna fill a container full of alcohol, don't smoke near it. PSA out of the way. Uh, but no, the hot soapy water will be all we need to break it up because what's gonna actually soften it up as the fluid and what's gonna break it loose is the ultrasonic waves that will be traveling from the bottom up through this. It's everything's just gonna kind of vibrate. It's gonna all start turning gross. And then realistically, what we should be left with at the end of the day is a clean fitting. In fact, I use this, and we'll put a picture up right here. I use this to clean some, uh, I'm currently resto modding a 68 Camaro and I have the original door latches that were left out in the elements, just completely hammered with gunk and corrosion and nastiness. And I looked at these one out of the box that came with the car and I was like, these will never be usable again. And I went, I wonder, I filled this up full of, um, I can't remember what kind of degreaser it was. Anyway, it was a degreaser, a mechanical degreaser, just filled it up to the top, put them in there for like an hour. And when I pulled them out, this is what they looked like. So I figure if it can do that, it should be able to clean these fittings. All right, so let me get this all prepared. I gotta figure out how I'm gonna get water in here because we don't have a hose. Just as long as we have enough water to cover everything. There is a, you gotta make sure you leave the, the cage in. The reason for that is it gets it up off the ground. It has to be suspended. But I'm gonna do 20 minutes at the start, take a, a couple out, see how they look, and then kind of reassess from there. And I was thinking about this. If, I think this is something worth having on hand if you're gonna be doing water cooling but you don't need one this size. I only got a big one because when we were doing the overclocking stuff and I was dousing boards with Vaseline and whatnot, this was making it really easy to clean GPUs and it's not quite big enough for a motherboard, but you could get a small like jewelry cleaner one, which is only like this big. I got my wife one for like her rings and stuff and that'd be plenty for the fittings. And I think the fittings is realistically all you would need it for. You could do it with radiators as well. Will the 360 even fit in there? Yes, it would. So you'd have to make sure the water level is high enough to get up inside there, and it would loosen up everything in the rad, and then you would just have to rinse it out really, really well. So we're set to 40C. Right now it's at 32. Remember I said I'll warm the water up some? And heater on. You could also set this to heat first, and then once it's at temp, turn on. Ah, that's sound, man. What? 20 minutes. All right, so it went for 20 minutes, and then it started again. 
That T-fitting was terrible. You can see though where some of the paint kind of came off from the threads and that's gonna be expected too. If any of the paint is like flaking, it can flake it off too, but these are still perfectly salvageable. See, this one here was one of the really bad corroded ones. You can see how some of the nickel plating has started to come off in the ring, but this is still completely usable. Here's another one that was really bad. Again, the nickel plating corroded off. Um, that's brass. These are brass fittings. So there's exposed brass, but again, not a problem. You can still use that fitting. So far, I'm not finding anything that like didn't come clean. So all the stuff that was stuck to it is gone. That's perfectly smooth. So there's actually a little bit right there on those inner threads, but to be honest, this has been sitting for like, well, these are also years and years old of sitting there dried out with the loop empty. That's like the worst thing you could do for fittings. So I actually thought that just about everything up here was gonna be completely trash. What's funny is it like, it polished up the chrome. Actually, it's nickel plating. It polished it up so like brand new levels of nice. Cause I forgot ultrasonics can, also work as polishers. That's why people also use them for jewelry. Um, and you just buff them afterwards. Some of the fittings do have some minor nickel flaking. That happens with the type of coolant that was used. I already explained that the, these were both abrasive type coolants in um, the uh, Threadripper and Skunk Works build because the opaques do have some abrasion, abrasiveness to them. They do have like a grit to them. So what this will also expose is anything that is like eaten through the nickel and if any sort of corrosion or oxidation has started to happen on the metal underside. So something like this, I'm not too worried about. I would still reuse this fitting as long as it, um, well, these types, these fittings actually seal up here like that, not down inside. So this, as you tighten the compression, it squeezes that O-ring out and then that'll push against the tube. So it's only one O-ring that seals it. So I'm not too worried about what's down inside there. But these right here, I probably wouldn't reuse these. This one, maybe. I just don't like how this one has what looks like oxidized aluminum, or sorry, copper. This one's probably still okay to use. It's kind of gross in there though. This one right here started turning black and it's very rough. So there's still some residue down in there. So this would take multiple cleanings. Could potentially be reused, but it's really rough in there. And then this one here, once again, just a lot of the nickel plating is, is gone. So when you see flakes and stuff floating around in your loops, it could be some of these nickel platings uh, coming off. And they're gonna all react differently. Every nickel plating procedure, like every company's nickel plating is a little different, different manufacturer, maybe a slightly different uh, chemical makeup. The fluids react differently. The colors of the fluids in the same fluid type can actually react differently. So there's a lot of flakes and stuff at the bottom of this right now. See, most of this stuff is just floating around in the bottom right here. Um, this fitting I forgot to put in there, so I'm just gonna toss this one in there. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this 240 rad. Let's see if we can get a shot down inside of it. So you can see this radiator has some blue greenish uh, discoloration in there. The problem with this is I used fluid that turns this color when it dries out and turns all powdery, like I showed you with the fitting. So I don't know if that's oxidation or if that's fluid. Either way, or like dried fluid powder from the opaque stuff. Anyway, I'm gonna toss this in there, let it submerge, let it fill, because I'm really curious if I can clean the inside of a rad with the ultrasonic, because remember there is flux and stuff that could still be floating around in here. If that's the case, then I might start ultrasonic cleaning all my radiators before I actually put them in my builds, because that'd be a, like a surefire way of getting it nice and clean. But in terms of the color with, with oxidation on, on copper, if you ever needed an example of that, well, the Statue of, a Lib the Statue of a Liberty, the Statue of Liberty was copper. When it's we, copper. <laughs> okay, is copper. The Statue of Liberty is copper when we received it as a gift from France. But over the centuries, it has turned the bluish green color you see now because it is fully oxidized. Okay, so these were the really screwed up ones. It looks better, like multiple cleanings. All right, what are we gonna get out of the radiator here? Oh yeah, look at all that crud. It's like milky. So these are painted Primochill rads. They're painted by Primochill, not me. Um, the side that the fans were mounted on, you can see some of the paint flaked off with the ultrasonic because this is where the fans were mounted. Um, it's worth pointing out that if you have any sort of chipping paint anywhere, obviously the ultrasonic is gonna work that loose. This is the side the fans went on, so it's not that big of a deal. But if I were gonna mount that somewhere now, 
where that would show, that would be a problem. In terms of inside though, nothing really changed. So you can see the threads on the right uh, pipe right there is, is still dirty. On the left side, if we look inside there, the left side still has that buildup kind of in there. So we would still have to rely on a chemical cleaning for the radiators because I just think this is too heavy. I think it's, um, I don't know, absorbing it or something. I, I just don't think the sonic energy is enough to get through there. But in terms of fittings and stuff, um, this actually worked so much better than I expected it to. And even the ones that were really bad that I was like, oh, I'd probably get rid of those after a second cleaning. Yeah, I think I've completely changed my mind on that. Like I don't see any of these here that I would feel uncomfortable keeping. Who would have thought the power of sound? The best sound advice I'm ever gonna give you is to subscribe. It's free. Is there any better argument?